In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this colorful transition right inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe After Effects and you have a brand new composition created, we're first going to begin by creating a brand new solid. So we'll go layer, new, solid, and you want to make sure you pick a color of your choice. So pick a color that works for you. You've got all of these colors down here. Of course, you can always change the hex code down here if you've got a specific brand color. But if not, just pick a color that looks great. So somewhere around here. And then we'll just go up here and we'll change the width of this solid and the height of this solid to the size of your composition. So I'm doing an 8K Ultra HD composition. So I'm doing 7680 by 4320. Of course, though, if you're doing 1080p HD, this would be 1920 by 1080. And then you just want to press OK. Now from here, we're just going to turn on the proportional grid to help us with our masking. So we'll just select this button here, select proportional grid. And there you go. That looks really awesome. Now, before we carry on any further, you just want to first figure out where you want to do your masking. It's really important that you know what you're doing beforehand to make sure that you can do this effect effectively. So I'm going to crop out these two boxes here. So these first two lines, the second two lines and these third two lines. So we'll start with the top. So we'll go up to this top bar. We'll select the rectangle tool. We'll zoom out. And then I'm just going to crop around these middle two squares like so. Then we'll just zoom back in and that looks great. Of course, if you need to change any of your points, then feel free. So I'm just going to pull this one down a touch and then I'm going to pull this one down a touch as well. We'll select fit and then we'll just turn off the proportional grid for now. So from here, we're just going to go roughly 10 frames to the right. We'll go into our mask, select mask path and create a brand new keyframe by selecting the stopwatch icon. Now we'll pull our cursor back to the very beginning. We'll zoom out a little, let's turn the proportional grid back on and we're just going to move our mask over to the left. Now, if we turn the proportional grid back off, pull our zoom back to fit. As you can see, this is the effect that we now have. So that comes in and that looks great. So now we just need to let that sit for a few frames and then animate back out. So we'll create a brand new keyframe at mask path here. Essentially, we're just copying this endpoint here. So we're copying it here. It's going to stay stagnant for a second and then it's going to animate out. So we'll go a few frames over towards the right. We'll zoom out and we'll just drag this mask over to the right. Now, of course, turn on the proportional grid. You just want to make sure that that is matching up with those lines here. It's really important that they do perfectly sit here because otherwise we're going to see the video behind it if you don't do that. So once you're happy with the look of that, we can just go back to fit. And if we play this back, transitions in, transitions out. Now, of course, if you wanted to speed up the action here, then you can do so by just decreasing the gap between those keyframes. You can do that on the in and the out. So it comes in and goes out. If you wanted to slow that down, then you just increase the gap between the keyframes. So let's increase that gap, as you'll see, comes in slower and then goes out slower. But I'm going to have this fairly quick. We want this to be nice and dramatic. So I'm just going to decrease the gap a little. And then I'm just going to select all of the keyframes. We'll right click on one of them. Select keyframe assistant and select easy ease. So the easy ease keyframe interpolation is basically adding some soft animation onto those keyframes. So rather than suddenly stopping and starting at each specific keyframe, it's going to slowly ease in and ease out of each one. It makes the motion look a lot more natural and I just think it makes everything look so much better. So once you're happy with that, we can now move on. Of course, though, from here, we just need to make sure that we've got a little bit of room at the end, because essentially what we're going to do is we're going to stagger these on. So we're going to have three lines. They're going to come on slightly different times and go off at separate times. So we're just going to pull these last two keyframes over to the left. Make sure we've got a bit of a gap here. And then we're just going to select that blue solid, press P on the keyboard to load position. And then we'll just pull the position of all of this up. Make sure the bottom of this is sitting on that green line there like so. And then from here, we're just going to copy that solid. So we're just going to select that, go command C. That's control C if you're on Windows, then command V and V. Again, if you're on Windows, that's control V, control V. Then we'll select these two bottom layers, press P on the keyboard to load position. We'll select the middle layer. We'll pull this down to the middle like so. 
and then we'll select the bottom layer and we'll pull this down towards the bottom there you go so we're just going to turn off the proportional grid for now and as you can see doing so we can see we've got this gap here so that means we just need to move the position up a little of this bottom one so pull that up it needs to go up a little bit more there you go then we'll zoom out again the top one needs to come down a touch so we'll press p on the keyboard to load position we'll pull this down pull it down a little bit more just to get rid of that line there you go that looks great so if we select all of those layers press m on the keyboard to load our mask again if we play this back you can see we've got everything coming in at the same time of course though we don't want everything to come in at the same time so we're going to select the second layer the middle layer and we're going to nudge that over to the right by two frames so one two and we'll do the same thing on the top layer, but four frames so one two three four so as you can see these are now staggered coming in and then going out play this back there you go that looks really awesome and of course, because these are on separate layers, you don't have to leave everything the same color. If we go into effects and presets and search for tint, we can drop tint on our top layer. We can change the matte black to, let's say this red and matte white to the same red. Of course, if you wanted a very specific color, again, just add the hex code in here. So if you select the perfect color on one, just copy that hex code press OK, then go on to the other one, press Command V, and that will paste that in. But once you're happy with that, press Tint, Command C, you can copy that and paste that onto your second layer. Change the colors again, so we'll go for a yellow. Go on to Map White 2, select the yellow of your choice, press OK, and then when we play this back, you can see we've got our three different layers animating in at different times. Now there's only one more thing that we need to do to finish this off and that is to add some motion blur. So we'll select all of our layers. So you can do so by holding Command A or Control A or you can just select everything manually like so. Then from there you just want to make sure you can see this icon here. So this is the motion blur icon. If you can't then that's probably because you're in the wrong toggle switch slash mode. So select this button here to reveal this. Select the motion blur. Make sure this motion blur icon is blue. If it's gray, it's not activated. If it's blue, it is activated. And you'll know when it's activated because you'll see the motion blur appearing on the side of the box. So when we play this back, you can see we've got this really awesome transition happening and there is that nice motion blur to really finish us off. So there you go, that is the transition now complete. All we have to do now is just export this and drop this into our editor of choice. So we'll just select the composition. We'll go into composition, add to render cure. We'll go into render settings, best settings. Everything there is fine. Press OK. Go into output module. Format can be QuickTime. And then the channels RGB and alpha. The alpha channel is the invisible channel. It's that transparent background layer. So make sure you've got the alpha channel exported. You can resize this if you wanted to resize this if you wanted, but of course you don't have to. Press OK. Select the destination of this export. So I'm going to put this on the desktop, we'll press save, press render, and that's just going to take a few seconds to export. But as soon as that has finished exporting, we just want to jump over into Adobe Premiere Pro. We'll go into our finder, we'll find that specific file. So there you go, transition example. We'll drop this into Premiere. Now, as you can see in my example, I can only see the yellow and that's because I exported an 8K transition. So I'm just going to go into motion, scale, pull the scale down to 25. Of course, if you have a 1080 composition and you've got a 1080 transition, you don't have to worry about that. And there you go. All you have to do now is just find the point where this transition covers the screen, make a cut on the footage, and then you can add some other footage in, but I'm just going to go to a later part of that footage. And there you go. That is how you create this awesome colorful transition inside of Adobe After Effects. Export it with the transparent background and then import that into Adobe Premiere Pro on top of your footage. So there you go. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.